God has made known to us the mystery of his will, to bring together all things in Christ, all things in heaven and on earth in him. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Gracia Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi et Caritas Dei, et Communicatio Sancte Spiritus sit com omnibus vobis. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Oremus. O oh God, who in your wonderful providence decreed that Christ's kingdom should be extended throughout the earth, that all should become partakers of a saving redemption. Grant, we pray, that your church may be the universal sacrament of salvation, and that Christ may be revealed to all as the hope of the nations and their Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shamanes, the king of Assyria, occupied the whole land and attacked Samaria, which he besieged for three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, Hashia, king of Israel, the king of Assyria, took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria, settling them in Hala, at, at the Havar, the river of Gozen, in the cities of the Medes. This came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord, their, their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt, from under the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And because they venerated other gods, they followed the rights of the nations whom the Lord had cleared out of the way of the children of Israel and the kings of Israel whom they set up. And though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, give up your evil ways and keep my commandments and statutes in accordance with the entire law, which I enjoined on your fathers, and which I sent you by my servants, the prophets, they did not listen, but were stiff-necked as their fathers who had not believed in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, the covenant which he had made with their fathers, and the warnings which he had given them, till in his great anger against Israel, the Lord put them away out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. Verbum Domini. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. O oh God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been angry. Rally us. You have rocked the country and split it open, repaired the cracks, and it is tottering. You have made your people feel hardships. You have given us stupefying wine. Have not you, O oh God, rejected us so that you, that you go not forth, O oh God, with our armies? Give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dominos Fabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Matteo. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging that you may not be judged, for as you judge, so you will be judged. And with the measure, and the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but you do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you'll see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. Verbum Domini. So now we are in the last of the three chapters of the Sermon on the Mount. It's the beginning of chapter 7 and things get really are going to get more intense. They really, really are. And again, if you have not done this, if you have not done this, please, I encourage you to sit down in one city, three chapters, five, six, and seven of the Gospel of Matthew, the entire Sermon on the Mount. It is really the blueprint by which we're going to be judged. It's the blueprint by which uh, we, when we face Jesus, he's going to ask us about these things, or he's going to show us all right, where we failed in our lives in regards to these things, or where we did good, where we did well, right? Um, and so we want to be mindful. This is a, a wonderful reflection for us to think about uh, often, if not continuously. How are we doing in the teaching in regards to the Sermon on the Mount? Stop judging that you may not be judged, right? And now we'll, we'll, everyone will say, well, we don't judge people. We don't, well, I don't, I don't judge people. I don't judge people, right? And first of all, there is a, there is a, a misunderstanding in terms of what it means to judge people, right? Do we judge people? Do we judge their behaviors? Do we judge their actions, all right? And, and, and I would say, dare say, that I, I have no qualms judging people's actions, all right? And I'm going to get to that in a second. Judge people's actions, but do it through a filter in terms of the fact that we are sinners too, right? So we're going to look at the sins of others, but through the filter that we're sinners too. That's what Jesus is talking about. But let me give you, let me give you, uh, a possible example that has nothing to do with these types of things where you may judge, where we may judge, all right? And I used to do this all the time, right? And, and, and I get this. I get this from people all the time. Argue with me, actually. Argue with me over this. So you see a homeless person or a poor person, right? And you think to yourself, well, should I should I really be giving them anything? Should I be helping them? Uh, I used to think that way. What are they going to do with the money? If I give them money, what are they going to do with it, right? Uh, maybe I shouldn't give them money. Maybe I should give them food uh, or, you know what? There's so many homeless. There's so many homeless. The little bit that I do is really not going to make a difference, all right? All, all of these things, right? You know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we are not really responsible for all the homeless, every homeless person. We're responsible for the homeless people, the poor people, the people hurting in need that Jesus entrusts to our care each and every single day. Those who are who we're responsible for. I would not responsible for a homeless person, a poor person, a broken person that we never meet or we never find out about. Well, we are to a certain extent that we need to pray and fast for all those, right? The poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned. All right, but if we can't encounter a poor person, a hungry person, a thirsty person, we're supposed to, all right, do something, do something. Right? And now the situation may be that silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. You can sit and listen to that person and minimally pray for that person. Uh, but given resources, you really should be reaching out and helping those people and not be dissuaded by the fact that, uh, and, and let me give you a perfect example, right? Not this past winter, the winter before. 
we went through a cold snap of three days. And I decided I was going to go out and, uh, and help some uh, homeless people on the street because the temperatures getting down to zero that particular night was, was dangerous, right? Big difference between it being zero and five degrees and it being even 35 and 40 degrees at night, right? And I realized that there's no way I could help everybody. But I, I searched and those who Jesus entrusted in my care, I did my best. And, uh, uh, and, I, and I was worried about, well, should I do more for this person? Do me, you do what you can. You do what you can, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Then you give the rest to Jesus. But you do something, something, right? But the classic example is, right, all right, there's that homeless person. Is he an alcoholic? Is he a drug addict? You know, is he a scammer, right? Is he really homeless? Is he really poor? Or is this how he makes his living, right? No, that's judging. That is judging people. We can't be doing that, all right? But then there's the other aspect, all right, what Jesus is talking about, the sin. Remember, there's two aspects of Christ's mercy, right? Two aspects of Christ's mercy. He gives us all good things. We're called to share those good things with others. And then he forgives us our sins, so we are to forgive the sins of others, right? And uh, indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, you know, we may uh, see somebody who is uh, acting in a sinful way. Now, be mindful that Jesus does not say in any way, shape, or form, do not confront them about their sin. He doesn't say that. He doesn't. What he does say is before you confront them about their sin, confront sin in your life, in your life. And, and so it's not confronting the other person. It's how we do it. It's how we do it. Do we come from a, a judgmental, condescending, holier than thou? You need to, you have to, you should. Or do we sit down with that person and talk about Christ's mercy in our lives, how Christ helped us, right? How Christ was merciful to us, how we uh, struggle with sin in our lives, and that you want the, the same thing for them that you experienced in your life, and just ask him, how can I help you? How can I help you overcome this sin, this affliction, right? Uh, and, and maybe you don't make any headway. All right, but you can say, well, look, and I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to be here for you, and let me know how I can help you, right? This is what Jesus is talking about, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is truly what being Christ is to those who Jesus entrusts to our care each day, and this is about seeing Jesus in all those who Jesus entrusts to our care each day. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs. For the Catholic Church, the Pope, Bishop, the priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary and study for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everybody in their vocation may desire to do all things in humble obedience for the praise, honor, and glory of God and atonement of reparation. For our sins and charity and chastity in our vocations, we pray to the Lord, the peace in the world, Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, the conversion of the world, the conversion of nations, the conversion of political leaders, especially Catholic political leaders who defy their faith, conversions necessary within the hierarchy of the church, conversions necessary uh, within the pro-life movement of our own daily personal conversions for anyone that we've wounded or led astray in our lives, for anything that's wounded us, that we be reconciled with everyone. And also for the end of all the vicious attacks against life, marriage, and family, and for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, that they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, the intentions we hold in our hearts, for all the people we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, and uh, for uh, uh, the intentions of all those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each day, 
for our family intentions and for the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular our deceased loved ones and family members, and our loved ones and family members who are away from the church that they may embrace Christ's sacraments of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of uh, St. Joseph, St. Padre Pio, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine. Work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, to God the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the people consecrated to you, O merciful God, and through the power of this sacrament, grant that the multitude of those who believe in you may constantly be made a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own, through Christ our Lord. Dominos Robiscum, Sorsum Corda, Gracias Agimos, Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in his body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, and in joyful celebration we acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fide. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et con ipso et in ipso est tibi Deo Patri omnipotente in unitate spiritus sancti omna sonora gloria per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Pax Domino, sit semper frabiscum. On your stay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. Body of Christ. Lord Amos, O oh God, who constantly feed and strengthen the church which your sacraments grant to us, who have been nourished at the heavenly table, that by obeying your teachings of love we may become for the human family a life-giving leaven and a means to salvation through Christ our Lord. Dominos Rabiscum, Benedicat Vos, Omnipotens Deus, Pater, Filius, Spiritus Sanctus, 
Ita Misa S. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. Thank you for joining us this morning. Now, we're in our Eucharistic revival here in the United States. So, again, I'm going to expose our Lord. Stay in the presence of our Lord for 10 or 15 minutes. We'll do this after Mass each day, as we have been doing now for a few weeks. And I'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes for the final send-off. O Sacrament, most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Thank you for joining us this morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm Father Stephen Imperato of ProtestChildKilling.com. ProtestChildKilling.com here in my Padre Pio Chapel. Uh, Facebook, uh, Father Imperato Live. Father Imperato Live will be a little bit later this morning. I have a couple of workers coming to work on the bedrooms. Uh, we'll be hitting the road tomorrow, so Mass will probably be early tomorrow. And then we'll be on the road, probably do the rosary uh, during uh, Father Imbrato Live tomorrow. A little later this morning, we'll do Father Imbrato Live, probably from the chapel here. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.